Charter Township of Orion Zoning Board of Appeals. Scheduled for this date, Monday the 13th. Please call the roll. Dan Durham? Here. Don Walker? Here. Mike Flood? Here. Tony Cook, who's yet to show Diane Ganassa? Here. Thank you. Next, we have the minutes from the 22nd of November meeting. Any changes, concerns? Move the minutes. Have motion by Ms. Anaskis, support by Ms. Walker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Um, before we take off with ZBA business, I just want to let the group know that this is this group's maiden voyage at this building here and then with these electronics. So if we have any glitches along the way, bear with us, please. Okay, first case is AB 2021, Lifted Industrial Partners, 4611 Liberty Drive, Sidwell 09-34-300-018. Petitioner is seeking one variance from Zoning Ordinance 78, Zoned IP, Article 8, Section 1804, Number 1, a 22.5 foot rear yard setback variance from the required 50 feet for a structure which is going to be a CO2 tank and shroud to be 27.5 feet from the rear property line. Do we have a petitioner? Step up to the mic, please. Identify yourself, and I'm sure there'll be some questions. Okay. I do have a presentation. I don't know if uh, I can plug in and share with the board. This gentleman in the back corner is here for that, for that very reason. Uh, I am Ron Rader. I'm here representing um, both the Lifted Industrial Team as well as TDG Architects, the architects of record for the program. Oh, okay. First off, uh, thank you to the board. Uh, congratulations on the new accommodations here. Um, hopefully this works out very well for you. Um, uh oh, my apologies here. Uh, the intent for uh, today's review is to uh, request a variance uh, for the lifted industrial partners uh, complex that is going in uh, in Orion Township. Um, basically, what we're proposing is adjacent to the uh, rear lot of the facility, uh, we have some parking. Uh, we've accommodated uh, a dumpster location uh, of future pad for the potential of some additional infrastructure and just uh, north of that would be a 14 foot by 14 foot pad that would accommodate a uh, 18 foot high CO2 tank. Um, the intent is that this would be a shrouded um, apparatus and the location is key for uh, the filling station or the filling truck that would come and service that uh, particular area. Um, the CO2 tank came to us uh, once the lifted industrial team brought their uh, cultivation team on board. So this was new information that came to us uh, after the business case had been developed and the cultivation team had settled on the type of uh, business case and uh, type of cultivation that they would be uh, executing within the facility. So Question. is it going to be the type of Type and size of CO2 tank that your neighbor to the north has? Identical. Thank you. We have some specifics. Uh, so the intent is that it would be a 14 foot, oh, thank you, a 14 foot by 14 foot pad 
uh, that the uh, tank would actually sit on. Uh, the pad itself is much larger than the tank is, uh, but obviously there is some infrastructure for the shroud and some safety devices that have to go on there as well as the pump apparatus. I think I know what you're going to tell me, but in the event of a problem, truck backs into the tank and you have a release, what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, the tank would just discharge CO2 into the atmosphere. And if anything, Not at all. And actually, where we've located the tank, if I go back to uh, the location here, um, we've used the uh, dumpster here as a strategic blocker, both from a visual standpoint as well as a safety standpoint. And then behind that, this potential infrastructure could house a generator in the future. Uh, all of this falls within the drive aisle. And then the um, CO2 tank is actually placed in the setback area here, and that's what's extending the 22. So you're still maintaining 27 foot 6 inches to the uh, adjacent lot line of our neighbor. Chief of the board. Thinking about that rupture, it would be like a giant uh, fire extinguisher. <laughs> exactly. As you recall, the planning commission denied your request to renew in front of us. Is that correct? Yeah, the reason it was de denied is because of the variance request and it had to come to you. And, and, and why does it have to be where you want it to be? Um, based on uh, the ordinance, uh, as it's laid out by Orion Township, uh, this was the area that had the least impact on the overall site. So strategically, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't a vis visual hindrance uh, to people uh, traveling along Giddings Road, um, as well as to our neighbors. Uh, our neighbors, of course, they have similar infrastructure in the same location on their site. So we felt that uh, this was the um, probably the best location overall. Thank you. Do you have any comment on that? Thank you. Do we have anybody in the audience that came to speak for it now? Frequently to this matter. Seeing none, thank you. Anything further by the board? I don't have anything myself. discussion we do in the matter of ZBA case AB-2821-63 listed industrial partners 4611 Liberty Drive Sidwell number 09-09-34-300-018 I would move that petitioner's request for one variance from zoning ordinance 78 Um, number one, a 22.5 foot rear yard setback variance from the required 50 feet for a structure, CO tank, and shroud to be 27.5 feet from the rear property line to be granted because the petitioner did demonstrate that the following standards for variances have been met in this case in that they set forth facts that show that in this case um, there was a practical difficulty. Um, this The granting of the variance modification will not materially be detrimental to the public welfare or materially injurious to the property or to improvements in such zone or district which the property is located. Um, further, it will not impair the access supply of light and air um, to adjacent property. It will not increase congestion. It will not 
not increase danger of fire or the public safety, nor unreasonably diminish or impair the property's value, or in any other way um, or respect impair the public health, safety, comfort, or welfare of the inhabitants of the township. Support. Motion by Ms. Danaskis, supported by Mr. Walker. Please call the roll. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Tony Cook? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Mike Flood? Yes. Dan Durham? Yes. Motion passes. Board, thank you very much. Good luck, sir. Dave, how's everybody being picked up on sound? You can see that you want. <laughs> Nice presentation. Did you uh, hear that? Can you just make sure you're speaking closer to your microphone um, yeah. so everything gets picked up? Thank you. Okay. Next case, AB 2021-64, Kevin Dougherty, storage, sense, wall sign, 100 Premier Drive. Sidwell 09-35-452-001. Petitioner seeking one variance from sign ordinance 153. Non-residential wall signs zoned IP. He's looking for a variance to allow one additional wall sign in addition to the one <coughs> allowed for a total of two wall signs totaling 94.92 square feet. Sir, introduce yourself please. Kevin Dordy. Um, this is kind of a unique situation. Um, we, the existing structure already has two wall signs on the building um, that were actually permitted through the township um, in 2004. Um, the ordinance hasn't really changed. Um, it was not that they previously allowed for two wall signs and then allowed for one. Um, I'm not 100% certain how they were able to receive a permit um, for the additional wall sign without actually uh, putting it in the form of a variance. Um, but that was done on August 4th, uh, 2024 in the Planning Commission meeting um, notes here. Um, we're simply just asking to replace what's there. The business owners have changed. Um, the name of the business is changing. The use is not changing. It was a storage facility. It will remain a storage facility. Um, the argument made by the previous owner uh, who I've been in contact with on several occasions to actually discuss the matter um, was that the ordinance allowed for the use of a ground sign because they were a corner lot with over 200 um, feet of frontage. They were actually allowed to. They did not want a ground sign, and their case was made that in lieu of a ground sign, they would like to have a second wall sign, which obviously they were granted a uh, permit for. Um, I don't think anything's really changed for that, but in my mind, when I kind of look at the property, um, I think there is actually a, you know, an additional consideration um, for safety reasons. Um, that property sits at the bottom of a hill, and you got two um, long hills coming down there. Um, the angle of the building where the front entrance is is such that when you're coming down, I believe it's uh, heading from the west, uh, you can't actually see the sign, and I believe it could create um, an obstruction or some sort of uh, situation for drivers where they're trying to locate the building or the business because they can't find it until the last moment. Um, you know, that's called a situation where you get a traffic hazard. I think that situation would be exacerbated, obviously, in the winter months in Michigan where the bottom of a hill traveling going to that shouldn't be nice. Um, I think giving drivers plenty of advance warning that their building is coming up warrants use, in this case, um, for the second sign, considering that traditionally, most sign placements are typically above the front entrance of the door. If you would require the business to stick to one sign and move that from the entrance of the door, it could also create a little bit of confusion you know, for the clientele on the property. Um, so uh, I don't know that it would create any hardship for the existing businesses or you know, residents in the community as it already exists. There's already two wall signs. Um, we're not seeking to go any larger than what's there. In fact, we're going slightly smaller. Uh, in addition, the ordinance today is such that we actually um, aren't exceeding technically the allowable uh, ordinance for just one wall sign. Um, and we, we calculate our wall sign a little bit more conservative than um, the way they did in this application uh, in 2006. 
Um, so again, just to change your owner, um, there's this uh, name. You just kind of want to keep that name the same. Put the name back up. Again. Yeah. One question for you yeah. is if you're successful, mm -hmm. is that new sign going to be wrapped around a corner? No. Nope, exact same placement and size um, will sit flush uh, on both walls and will not wrap around any corner. Thank you. Board members. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm glad we got this in our packet tonight because I was wondering too how they got the second sign, whether you know the planning commission did it or the building official did it. But uh, back in 2004, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know what you have there. I do have a copy of the minutes. Yeah, we do do. Perfect. Yeah, those do it. So that was in our packet tonight. So. Uh, if. Is successful, uh, would it be conditioned upon uh, agreeing also not to have a uh, monument sign out front? I, I absolutely. I see no reason why to change what was already put in place before. I think that if we are successful and we are granted the variance, I think this codifies everything that like no ground signs at this location. You guys get two wall signs. Um, that, that, that was my main concern. Is yeah. No, I don't abide by originally what they wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, 100%. We have no, no interest uh, in putting anything in. Any signage that exists on the property, we just kind of want to keep. So. Anything else from the board? Anything from anybody in the audience? Anybody come to speak to this? Seeing none? In matter of ZBA case AB 202164, Kevin Doherty, stored sense wall sign, 100 Premier Drive, 0935452001. I would move the petitioner's request for one variance from sign ordinance number 153, non-residential wall sign zone IP, the variance to allow one additional wall sign in addition to the one allowed for a total of two wall signs, totaling 94. 92 square feet be granted because the petitioner did demonstrate that the following standards for variances have been met in this case and that they set forth showing that in this matter the petitioner uh, is does show this practical difficulty in that the uh, uh, planning commission back 17 how many years ago a bunch of years ago uh, authorized the the previous owner of the property to have this sign uh, and uh, so due to a, I don't want to say a technicality of the order, ordinance, but since the previous owner had one, in addition to the, the petitioner has indicated that he is in, uh, that he is not seeking now, nor will he ever seek a ground sign, uh, I would move that the uh, practical difficulty has been uh, proven and ask that this uh, matter be approved. Discussion by the board. I yes. heard. No, thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Walker, supported by Mr. Naskis. Please call the roll. Tony Kirby. Whoops. Whoops. Who? No, Tony Kirby. Come <laughs> on, Dave. A new building. You want me to get him on the phone? I'm sorry. I get him on the phone. Yeah, yeah we call, do like a Tony Kirby. Yes. Don Walker. Yes. 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 Most passes. You're on your way. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a great day. Next, we have case number AB 2021-66. Whoops, nope, that's not the one. I'm, I'm confused now. New building. We've been a building for a year. Okay. It is the sign one. Oh, yeah, it is. I'm sorry, AB 2021-66. Phillips Sign and Lighting, Oxford Bank Ground Sign, 1115 South Lapeer Road, Sidwell 09 14 226 004. 
petitioner seeking one variance and signed ordinance 153 non-residential ground signs zoned op number one a 20-foot right of way setback variance from the required 20-foot for a ground sign to be zero feet from the road right of way seeking one variance from zoning ordinance 78 zoned op a 30-foot front yard setback variance from the required 30 feet for a ground sign to be zero feet from the front property line. Hi, good Hi. evening. My name is Ed. Ed Phillips, Phillips Sign and Lighting, 40920. Thank you. Executive Road, Harrison Township. Thanks, sir. And we have a handout, obviously. Mm -hmm. We'd like to pass out. Again, my name is Ed. I'm here with uh, Rich Miller, uh, Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of Oscar Bank. Our hardship is all about setback. Our sign meets the sign ordinance, Oxford sign ordinance, I'm sorry, in type, size, and height. We are seeking a variance from the 30-foot front yard setback for a ground sign. Our property line and road right-of-way are the same. That's what's outlined on that uh, handout. Do you notice that there's the red line? They both line up. We are requesting a 30-foot setback variance from both. Under Orion Township standards for variance, we have addressed all four, all four items, one through four. Uh, if you look at the, as the handout once more, um, you'll notice that our practical difficulty, if conforming to the ordinance, would put our sign 18 foot, give or take, into our parking lot. This is obviously a safety and visibility issue. Uh, number two. The fact that our property line and right-of-way are the same and close to our front parking curb is a major issue for us that forces us literally to put the sign in the parking lot again. Number three, we are reviewing, we are removing a sign well in excess of 142 square feet and replacing with a new conforming monument of 30 square foot, 8 feet in height, in line with our neighbor's type and size of sign. In the same spot, yes. Number four, and last, this sign will enhance the visual appearance of our property and serve the public well, identifying Oxford Bank. We feel our sign is in good shape, or uh, good taste, and uh, you were able to approve us this evening. Do you plan to take the one that's up there now down? Totally. So you have one sign basically right in the same spot? Exactly. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah. From from a from a sign perspective, the one that's there now, um, that's probably approximately 15 feet in the air. Oh, it's from far in excess of that. I have that number here. The sign that's there now is at least 22 feet. Okay. And so from. So you're going to shorten that to go to one that's going to be a monument sign. It's going to be eight feet tall. Exactly. Correct? Okay. Because the one that's there, I mean, I can understand the. the modernizing and the update we don't see what's actually on the sign but I can tell you that 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 current configuration works really well <laughs> no, it does. Um, so that's so to go shorter it's just it's kind of interesting that you're doing that but by all means I, you're right fully yes we're doing what your ordinance allows no no I'm not disputing that I'm just no, saying no, that no. what is there if you were to modernize because it would, would make sense to me versus taking well, you're taking 13 feet off of it to make it shorter, that's all. Our original request for working with Lynn at the city was to, in fact, modernize the sign. We were told that any modification of the sign at all would have to come down. So if we had the option of modernizing the sign, I, we, I think we would like to stay able and, and give that some consideration. We would much prefer to keep the existing sign with the modern updating thing enough. Did anyone mention to you that it would be a non-conforming sign? Is, did that come up in your conversation with them? Absolutely it did. This is, this is as a matter of fact, a non-conforming sign. Normally, the ordinances and the rules and the wishes all go towards one thing. If you have a non-conformity and can make it go away, make it go away. 
So that is probably why they told you if you mess with it, it needs to come down. Right. Which we're used to hearing. Well, that's not a uncommon. So if the board would entertain that, we would like to table this and bring back something new. We can't bring that into conformance. That's not going to happen, but we could certainly modify it. So, so what I was saying makes sense, but then you bring up the non-conformity, so that's an entirely... It's not what I was saying. Some Thank you, Mr. Cook. I appreciate you bringing it up. Uh, one thing I look at this when we ask for these uh, uh, variances along these roadways is make sure that the line of sight isn't affected. And uh, went out there and looked, and also I see you in your uh, application, you have a 25-foot clear vision triangle. Yes. And uh, I have to agree with that. that that's number one uh, concern we always have is that uh, the egress or ingress. Us as well. Find right. that within the, within the safety pack. We're well, well outside of that, as you, as you can see. Are you thinking in the future might put an electronic message sign out there? Or? I mean, that's your prerogative. With the yeah, we have that now in our in our uh, ordinance now. And all we're dealing with here is a setback. I've got no trouble with the non-conforming aspect of this because you're saying you you would be willing to modify that ex that sign that's there right now using your new logo or your whatever it is your new design. Is that what you're saying? I mean, you would have been. The sign that's there right now is not in any way going to be adaptable to the present sign ordinance. Thirty square feet is the ordinance. Eight feet in height, and I know you know it very well. Right. So I don't know how we would. We would still come back to you with a non-conforming sign. It would just be a whole lot less non-conforming than this thing. And if that's an option, we would love to take advantage of it. What do you think? Uh -huh. If they just put that little stuff up in the, in the existing sign, I, I know it's a non-conforming sign, but it's not aggravating the non-conformance. It's not making it worse. It's not increasing the non-conformity. You know, I mean, typically, signs are content neutral, so it doesn't matter what you have on it. Correct. I tend to agree with you. I mean, I, I don't want to be doing something anti-ordinance here. Mm -hmm. But if they're willing to do that, that makes a lot of sense to me. It might be cheaper for them. I don't know. I shouldn't say it to you because you're the sign guy. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> this is my client. And we're, we're it might be cheaper to, to, and because that sign's been there forever and everybody, I don't know. That's just my thought. If somehow it, you don't increase the non is that okay? Typically, though, Since you're the building official. Uh, yeah, um, typically it goes on a monetary value with our ordinance on a non-conformity with that. I'm sure you've spoken about this with Tammy or Lynn, correct? I did. I did. And Lynn was pretty clear that if we modify, if we in any way alter the existing sign, it would be an issue. And she's saying what she should, she's supposed to say. That's exactly. For a because to be really honest, it would make everybody happy. I think the point, Mr. Walker, is well well made. That an eight foot sign sitting in front of this piece of property with the trees and everything that's going on here is going to be a little difficult to actually find. It's, I mean, it's two feet taller than I am sitting on this big chunk of property. So if we could utilize the existing poles and come back to the design, that'd be fantastic. Mr. Naskis. So, how old is the sign? Does it need structural? No. The holes are actually inside these white columns that you see. Uh -huh. And this, this is all decorative. All this stuff will be stripped off and we just use those holes. What I can imagine doing is coming back and cutting this sign down. I don't know how well you guys can see this. But taking and cutting this thing right off right here, I mean, right at the bottom of this blue sign, and it's gone. We would just use them, that existing little goal post there. And just Oxford Bank would have a nice size logo on it, and we might have a small electronic sign underneath it. And that would be a perfect situation for this. And that would be over the height? It would, it would be over height and over square footage. That would be a massive reduction of the non-conformity. Yes. Massive. I would just offer to the board, 
in every ordinance book I've ever read in three different municipalities, the language is almost exactly the same. Cannot change a nonconformity. So you make a motion and it is successful. I don't think that's going to be the end of the story. But that's just me making a statement. I'm, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, and currently we're going through our ground side, side. And not our mounted side. So, you know, this would be a good point if they want to come back and go for another variance of that, right? For something that falls in board. Sir, what if we table this tonight and we bring back a design that is precisely exactly what I outlined here, using the goalposts that are there and using the, and bring back and present that to you? Would that be something you'd you will run your application through planning and zoning? I'm sorry? Your application will have to go through planning and zoning, just like that one did. Yes, I understand. If the board would be willing to at least look at that for us. We could bring back the design and be willing to table this. Well, you're, you're asking us something that we really can't answer because you may get stopped at planning and zoning. Well, planning and zoning would say you have to go to ZBA. Yeah, you'll have to re-advertise, though. And understand. That's at all an option. I, mean, I think we'd like to take a this, this is a statement, again, unofficial. I don't speak for any of the other board members. But I believe, personally, if you want a replenished, good-looking sign in the ground quickly, go the way you're going. That's just my opinion. It is not being official from the top. So you, we would be approving what you've brought to us. Okay. Again, I, I feel like I shouldn't be going out this far on the end of the limb, but if you have taken your application to them, they have told you to come to us. You have. We've approved it. You'll have to go back to them again. Um, I don't know. That, that's as far as I'll go. Like I say, I'm one voted, voting member who can't make a motion, so you got board here. That's the one who started us down this path. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, something that, that our chairman said, uh, Mr. Graham said, um, in terms of the nonconformity and, and not being able to modify it. Um, the route that you have before us is something that does become conforming and fits with today's or, or, or ah ordinances so um, to for us to vote on this we can um, and that's something that we know you can go forward with the other one is kind of a you know, it's, it's pie in the sky right now because again it is a non-conforming sign and, and would go against everything in the ordinance book so, uh, for our chairman okay. Okay, so we're essentially at the spot we were when you got up from your chairs and came up here. Yeah. Okay, just want to be sure I understand. No, we're, we're way beyond that, but <laughs> okay. reality, we are not. Okay. Anything further from the board? All right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. All right, and the matter of ZBA case AB2021-66, Phillips sign and lighting. Oxford Bank ground sign, uh, address 1115 South Lapeer Road, 0914 I would move that the petitioner's request for one variance from sign orange number 153, non-residential ground sign, zoned OP, a 20-foot road right-of-way setback variance from the required 20 feet for ground sign to be zero feet from the road right-of-way, and one variance from Zoning ordinance number 78, zoned OP, a 30-foot front yard setback from the required 30 feet for a ground sign to be zero feet from the property line be granted because the petitioner 
it demonstrates the following standards of variance have been met in this case and that they have set forth facts which show in this case, number one, the petitioner did show the following practical difficulty that the existing sign um, is, was built in, uh, I'm sorry, erected in the 70s and that it uh, needs to be modernized. Uh, the following are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved that do not generally apply to the other properties in the same district. And that is uh, the current sign that they have is uh, non-conforming and what they are doing uh, in order to, to modernize with the things that are going on in the area. They are willing to uh, not only update their sign, but also bring it to uh, today's, uh, into conformance with today's standards. The variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right possessed by others in the same vicinity, based upon the fact that uh, there are new businesses that are coming in all around them, and they want to uh, make sure that they have directions uh, for people who might be seeking out their services. The granting of the variance of modification will not materially be detrimental to the public welfare or materially injurious to the property or improvements in such a zone or district in which the property is located. Again, as uh, site distances have been taken into account, and again, it's uh, going to be a sign that will be meeting today's ordinance standards. Further, based on the following findings of fact, the granting of this variance would not impair an adequate supply of light or air to adjacent properties, unreasonably increase congestion in the public streets, increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety, unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the surrounding area, or in any other respect, impair the public health, safety, comfort, morals, or welfare of the inhabitants of the township. Support. Motion by Mr. Cook. Support by Mr. Flood. Anything additional from the board? Please call the roll. Van Durham? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Mike Flood? Yes. Tony Cook? Yes. You, your presentation has passed. Yes. Usually I congratulate folks, but I'm not sure how you feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're good to go anyway. Good luck with whatever happens. <laughs> we appreciated all the consideration. Can, can I say one more thing for you too, sir? Thank you for the bank for taking up the uh, donations on this for Oxford. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, next case. And I did indeed shuffle my agenda. I apologize to Shane Richardson. Case number AB 2021 65. Vacant parcel located directly behind 2701 Judah Road. Petitioner is seeking two variances from zoning ordinance number 78 R1, section 6, section 6.04. Number one, a 37-foot front yard setback variance from the required 40 feet to build a home three feet from a private road to the north. And number two, a 39-foot front yard setback variance from the required 40 feet to build a home one foot from a property line to the west. Hi. Introduce yourself, whoever the presentation is. Good evening. Um, I'm Shane Richardson. A little backstory: I grew up in Lake Orion my whole life preschool up to high school. I graduated from Lake Orion High School. Um, I'm living in Redford now, and I bought this property with my wife to raise our kids in Lake Orion. I'm super excited about it. I couldn't think of a better place to raise my kids. Um, the reason I'm asking for the variance on these two is because the way the property line comes in, do you guys have the uh, attached to the application? I attached the survey of the property. Did you guys get that, or you want me to pass this around? I see it, my computer's died, so you'll save me that. This is stuff that to get sent out by email. This is showing a lot, and then this is what's under discussion. That's the private road. Right. And that's where I'm going to go. Where's the driveway coming in? The driveway's coming in. Okay, gotcha. So then that's where the house will be. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, uh, the main reason. The main reason I'm asking for this is where that T is coming in, there's a natural slope, and I want to do a ranch with a walkout basement. And my fear is if I can't get this easy, or get this variance that it pushes me down this hill, and now I'm worried about being too wet because it's a low spot. And if I don't, then I'd have to build it another 1,000 feet back, so I'd have a 
close to the 2,000 square foot or 2,000 foot driveway coming to my house. Yeah, I was, I'm sorry, I was there three times trying to make sense of this. Is the private road you're talking about the the graveled path that goes up the side and up the hill? <laughs> yes, that was a mistake. <laughs> That's okay. We'll overwrite we'll right that mistake. That's okay. But that is technically, that's the, that's the private road easement coming. Okay. And when I get up to the top and it stops, yeah. your house is going to be way before that happens. So. Yeah, I want to, because where that T is coming in, it's another, what was it, 37 feet from the, it's uh, 37 feet from the north is where I want to start the house from the setback, from the actual property line. But it's only three feet, or I'm sorry, three feet from the actual private road easement where that T is. Which my understanding, the reason they put that T in there when they parceled this property off was for the fire department. Um, and I did when I was talking to uh, Tammy and Lynn. They we talked to the fire marshal, and they they're, they're okay with it as long as you guys are okay with it. Um, but like I said, my big fear with it is just the. I'm afraid if I go too far down, you saw the property, I'm afraid it's going to be real. It gets really wet in the spring. So yeah. I'm trying to keep it up on that hill as much as I can so I can fill in around it and make it more stable. And also, plus in the front, we're going to put a, uh, a grass driveway in for the fire truck to come in front of the house. And we'll put like eight inches of uh, 21 AA and then put grass on top. Question for Mr. Cook. Uh, is Lake Orion allowed to take apparatus off road? It is a case by case basis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I served in another community and they catch you off on the grass with a fire truck. You're going to be walking home. Well, if it becomes an issue, I can put concrete. That's not, uh, that's not a As I say, that was there. That's why I asked Mr. Cook. He is involved here. Yeah. He, he would know. Um, do you know who the owners are of the property that you're butting up to? Yes, yeah, so I met them. That's who I actually bought it from was 2701 Judah Road, which is directly in front. Um, I bought it from them. I've had conversations with them. Um, I also had conversations with my neighbor to the next door to them, to the uh, north. Um, they're fine with it. They have no problems. Nobody seemed to have an issue with it. But. This is not, it's going to come out in a way that I don't mean. But 2701 is content then to look at a house out their back window. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You say you bought that property from that, those folks? Yeah. 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 So they knew I was out of my full intention. Yeah. I even told them where I was putting it. Like I said, I've had many conversations with them. Very nice people. Sounds like they split the property off. Of yes. Yeah. They had seven acres, seven and a half acres. They took two and a half for their house and they split off the five. So it's kind of like, ooh, I saw it and it was just match made in heaven. So I, was, I looked at like 10 different properties. And you're, and you're landlocked to the north. Yes. Yeah, it's all landlocked. Behind me is Menards. Yep. So. Yeah. He was wondering what happened. To you. What's that? The, the owner of 21, 2701. Oh, he was? It's like they put the driveway in, and I haven't seen him anymore. Yeah, but well, we work on the swimming pools, okay. and summer times are the busiest uh, the time of year. Price of the lumber, too. Okay. Price of the lumber went up. <laughs> not this year. Just walk. On that, that gravel. Gravel, I'll call it gravel road that you refer to as a, as a private road. Who owns that road? It's technically an easement. Yeah. Okay. It's, they're, they're called, I thought going into this, when we purchased the property, I thought it was a driveway. So then we found out talking to Tammy that it's actually they consider it a private road. So that's where this all began. Easement, whose easement is it? Our I'm problem. guessing the city's. From, it's private. From my understanding, they put it there for the fire truck, was the whole purpose of it. A place where, so a fire truck could get up in there if it, it had to? To get yeah. to my only my house, and then so they have somewhere to turn around. That's why they put that big T in there on the survey. Okay, thank you. Yep. And Mr. Chairman, I see in our packet, uh, Jeffrey Williams, our fire marshal, uh, has no concerns. Good. Which is a good thing. That's a nice, solid road. I mean, I was in a minivan of all things, and it was there was no squish to it. There yeah. was no anything. Yeah. We've been getting a lot of rain. Yeah, we did it. We did it right. It's just we jumped the gun on it because he had a really good deal when they were tearing up M24. We got some millions from that. From that was actually our customer at uh, Dan's excavating. 
we built a swimming pool for him, so we got a really good deal on it, and we just kind of jumped the gun on it. Yeah, <laughs> so we jumped deal. the gun. <laughs> but we, it's way better than Judah Road, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on concrete now in Redford, so I'm like, uh. Anybody in the audience come to speak to this matter tonight? Okay, thank you. Chair, Mr. Walker. In the matter of ZBA case AB202165, Shane Richardson, vacant parcel located directly behind 2701 Judah Road, I would move that the petitioner's request for two variances from Zoning Ordinance 78R1, Article 6, Section 6041, a 37 front yard setback variance from the required 40 feet to build a home three feet from a private road north, and two, a 39 foot front yard setback variance from the required 40 feet to build a home one foot from a private road west be granted because the petitioner did demonstrate that the following uh, standards for variances have been met in this case as they set forth facts which show that in this case the, the petitioner has a practical difficulty due to the unique characteristics of this property and are not related to general conditions in this area. He indicated that the owner of the easement is the uh, was the per, was the owner of the property that he purchased the property from and he is, is fully aware of the petitioner's uh, intention to build a home there uh, also the in, the, the uh, following is is our is an exceptional circumstances in that uh, the petitioner has already sort of manufactured his own road up up in there already uh, and uh, they also not due to the general conditions of the property in the area it's necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right and the granting of this variance will not materially be detrimental to the public or material materially injurious to the property or to improvements in such area Moved by Mr. Walker. I will offer support. Please call the roll. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Tony Cook? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Mike Flood? Yes. Mandera? Yes. Unanimous, you're on your way. Thank you. I'm looking forward to coming home. Okay. <laughs> Shane? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have case AB 2021-67. Anton Rosinski, I know I butchered it, I apologize, <laughs> at 592 Cushing. Mr. Chair, I need to let my colleagues know that um, this property is on the same street that my residence is on. I do not know the owner. I have no um, thoughts or opinions about the, uh, the, um, the um, application, but I do need to let you know that I did receive notification because I am within the required amount. Chairman, I have no problem with Ms. Nassis uh, sitting in on this. I don't either. I'm glad she uh, made us aware of that. Thank you. I know that'll make one resident or in township happy. <laughs> Mr. Walker, that sounds Without okay me. to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back. We were Mr. Rosansky, 592 Cushing, Sidwell 09-03-278-006. Petitioner is seeking three variances from Zoning Ordinance 78, Zoned R3, Article 6, Section 604, Zoned R3. Number one is a 23-foot front yard setback variance from the required 30-foot to build a home with an attached garage seven feet from the front property line. Number two is a two-foot side yard setback variance from the required six-foot to build a home with an attached garage four foot from the side property line to the south 
And number three is a 12.36% lot coverage variance above the allowed 25% for a total lot coverage of 37.36%. Introduce yourself, please, and let us know where you live. Good evening. My name is Anton Rodansky. Um, I own the property at 592 Cushing Street, but I currently live in Clarkson. Um, I searched for this property for a long time uh, in hopes to find my, and build my dream home. Um, I'm actually a builder, and I do build for other people, and this was for me. So, and the first variance I'm um, asking for is seven feet where the current detached garage is 10 feet from the current property line. And so with our design, it would have been moved seven feet, but we could accommodate it technically 10 feet, but I still need a variance for it to be exactly in the same spot. Um, but it would be attached versus a detached garage. And the two foot site yard would be um, to the south side and the north side would have 10 feet. Uh, the reason behind that is so we have access to the lake because the uh, property needs a seawall, um, landscaping, and so on. And then that's the side that I was planning on putting condensers on, um, which will then decrease the, the side. And the third one would be 12.1 or 12.36 percent light coverage is. Uh, just the, the size of the house that we could make it work. Originally, we weren't planning on doing the second floor, but we couldn't make it work. So it ended up being added. it was needed to add it. And it actually would have to be increase a little bit because the requirement is minimum 900 square feet. I have two quick things. One, you were here one, one time before, correct? I was. In your presentation, you might want to let us know if you would what you wanted then, what you wanted now, and what has changed, or what you want now. Oh, and number two, you are taking that house down that's there. Correct. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I think with diff different addresses. Okay. I haven't been here for this case. You were here for a, a different for a, for a different home. I was forget everything I said then. I apologize. <laughs> Actually, for two different homes. <laughs> okay. Well, recognize the name. There aren't yes. Any. And, and I'll be back, too. Okay. okay. Question by the board. He used the term condenser. He meant to put a condenser in. What, what does that represent? Air conditioner. Oh, okay. So condenser, the gas hookup, the electrical. Okay, because you were talking about uh, you know, the wall and then you say condenser. And I'm like, okay, it's one I'm not familiar with. Makes sense. Yeah, it would go on the south side. So. House could be moved the additional two feet, but then it would, you know, then it would go to eight, and then plus the condenser, approximately three feet. So then it would limit me to about five. Does your neighbor to the south have any concerns? Uh, besides me, on the side with condenser, would be able to go into that neighborhood? I have not spoken to them. Uh, but I really don't think it will be an issue. Um, currently, actually, where that part of the garage, where it's two feet, that there's a parking spot currently there. Um, and it's a little bit on the hill, and when it gets wet, it gets muddy and so on. So I'm sure they would like that a little bit more. I noticed that the neighbor, if you're looking at the house, your neighbor to your left. North side? Yep, north side. Um, their garage sits quite a, a bit inboard of the one that you have now. The one that's coming down, of course, like you talked about. When the new one goes up, where is the footprint of the garage going to end up? It will sit. Uh, so the neighbor to the south side is approximately 10 foot. The current garage on my property is currently 10 feet. The one to the north side sits back a little bit further, but that's also uh, with a the survey, there's a there's an angle to the street, too. So um, there's, there's there's does sit a little bit further back. I'm not sure. I was looking through my surveyor to see if he actually pointed how much, but he didn't. Um, so so my garage would protrude a little bit further. Currently. What concerned me when I was there was looking at the neighbor's garage as if I were trying to back out of there. 
Mm -hmm. It's got to be a tough job now with the, your garage sets that you have. If you're out any further, I don't know if it's going to be, well, I would say possible. Well, anything's possible. But it, it might make it more difficult. It possibly. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, spot to be in with the distance to the road currently. Uh, the whole goal was to put all the vehicles into the garage versus mostly stacking them outside. Um, and so we could make it work. We could shrink it to what's existing currently, but it still wouldn't meet the requirements. Thank you. If I might, may add the three feet, it's doable for us to actually shrink the house. Well, it, say it just caught my eye. It may not have caught the eye of any of the other board members, so it may not may not be an issue. Yeah, those are always tough along those lake properties. Those are narrow at yeah. the beginning, and then you twist. Yeah. yeah. And the garage is on that street. Some of this, they're not. You know, they're not all in line. Yeah, but allowing me to have that 10 feet on one side, I could create a parking spot there, and then at that point, it would have a perpendicular or parallel parking, perpendicular parking to the garage. Sir, you indicate that the square footage of the home is 1,800. Uh, no, the the square footage of the home with the first and uh, second floor is 2,730. Eighteen sixteen is the main floor level. And we came up to approximately on the second floor eight hundred and seventy, but it needs to be a minimum nine hundred, so that would have to increase a little bit. So that's the second floor. Second floor, yes. Thank you. I had I heard one of the other board members ask if you had spoken to a neighbor. Which side is it, or have you talked to both of them? Or? It would be the it would be the south side, and uh, no, I have not spoken to either of them. How long you had the property? Uh, three months, approximately four. And the way things go, that's not really long enough to. To be honest with you, I'm not even really there. Besides to pick up the mail. The house, the house actually um, has got quite a bit of issues. Thank you. Anything? All the time on these lots, as I always look at it, and I, when I consider the lot coverage, I always worry about the water. My biggest concern when you're talking about this kind of lot coverage. You mean drainage or? Yes. Drainage. Yeah. Uh, yep. Exactly. Uh, the roof, you know, with and with the smaller setbacks on the sides, mm -hmm. you know, you just can't run your gutter and dump it right out the side because it, you know, you got to have some sort of plan with these in between the homes because if you just dump your gutter down the side, you're taking all that roof water and just something that I you need to be mindful. Final grades on this. Do. Does anyone, to your knowledge, use dry wells anymore? Yeah, yeah, we see quite a few of those. Anybody in the audience that came to speak to this matter tonight? Come on up, please. This gentleman will surrender the mic and you'll identify us if you would, or identify yourself and tell us what's on your mind. I'm not north of his property, right next door. Okay. I'm just here because I don't understand all this. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. And I just want to make sure um, how close the house is going to be built next to the property, you know, uh, against the property line. That was the only my concern. 
like it was going to be moved wider. It's extended, so it's actually going to be a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's the other side. <laughs> You said you're the neighbor to the north, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm reading through a spec sheet here that came from the Planning and Zoning Department, yeah. requesting these, and the side yard setback north is six feet, and that's okay, it says on our sheet, so that wouldn't affect you then on the north side. It's the south side that you're getting, the, you want the relief for the, for the four feet, I think it is? So, so that bump out on that garage, if we, you got to have that variance for that. Okay. That helps explain a little bit there. The house will be almost, uh, well, we'll be inside of the six foot uh, setback we're supposed to be on that. It's good, Well, and because of the location of the proximity to the property line, it would be a fire rated wall on that garage. Yeah. Ten seconds. Also in our packet, the fire chief has no concerns. Since you took the time to come down here, I'm going to ask you one question. I'll take this gentleman out of it. He just bought the property. Um, how have you, what kind of luck you had getting out of your garage all this time? No, I have not had any problems. No sight line issues or anything? Okay. Thank you. Anybody else come to speak to this? Seeing none, thank you. Hmm? It looked like you might have been at work there. Well, I'm just scrolling through. Oh, okay. I know I haven't done my... Uh, my due diligence yet tonight. Everybody else is picking up the baton. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. <clears throat> Let the chips fall where they may. That's why I was scrolling to kind of see what the, the ver verbatim here is. If I might ask, um, so, so you're saying the way that number two is reading is not quite correct. It says a two-foot side yard setback variance from the required six to build a home with an attached garage four feet from the, so it's the garage only that's going to be four feet. From correct. The line. Okay. The, the home uh, in 29. Okay. Thank you, sir. That was, that was due to that bump out. Bumping the garage out. The, the four feet is the bump out, yeah, out of the garage. And the front is because of the garage. Okay. Uh, in the matter of ZBA case AB 2021-67 and Tan Rojanski. Pardon me? Rojanski. Rojanski. Am I close? That's enough. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. 592 Cushing Street. City wall number 09032780006. I will move that the petitioner request for three variances from zoning ordinance 78, zoned R3, Article 6, Section 6.04, zoned R3, 1, a 23 foot front yard setback variance from the required 30 feet to build a home with an attached garage seven feet from the front property line. Number two, a two foot side yard setback variance from the required six feet building a home with an attached garage four feet from the side property line south. Number three, a 12.36 lot coverage variance above the allowed 25% for a total lot coverage of 37.36% be granted because the petitioner did demonstrate that the following standards for variances have been met in this case, and they set forth facts which show that in this case, the petitioner does show the following practical difficulties uh, due to the unique characteristics of the property and it is really, uh, uh, 
related to general conditions of the same properties in that area, they're all being those uh, 50 to 40 foot wide uh, lake lots. Mm -hmm. The following are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved that do not apply generally to other properties in the same vicinity. Uh, you are going to tear down the existing structure, and this will be a new structure. That's correct. That will be a condition of this approval that the existing structure has to be torn down. The variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of substantial property right possessed by other property in the same zone of vicinity. Based on the criteria as before mentioned, the granting of the variance and modifications will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or materially interest to the property or to improvements in such zone or district in which the property is located based on the following findings. these uh, narrow uh, lake lots. Further, based on the following findings of fact, the granting of this variance will not impair an adequate supply of light or air adjacent property, unreasonably increase the congestion of public streets, increase the danger of fire and danger of public safety. And in our packet, the fire marshal has uh, stated he has no concerns in this uh, matter. Unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the surrounding area. But building a new house would probably uh, add to the uh, property values. Or in any other respect, impair the public health, safety, comfort, morals, or welfare of the inhabitants of the township. Motion on the floor. I, I will support the motion if, if uh, you could amend it to include something with uh, compliance with all drainage. Um, Compliance with all, all building codes. I'll make my motion to include that. Yeah, we have a motion and a support, but before I call for a roll call, I just want to ask you one question, and these gentlemen broached it. In the event that your inspector or the building official or somebody has a concern about drainage, it can be easily remedied. But can I ask that you'll keep an open mind? Absolutely. Very good. Please call the roll. Mike Flood? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Tony Cook? Yes. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Dan Durham? Yes. You're on your way, pass. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, public comment. Nope, the public's heading for the door, it looks like. Hey, do we have any communications from anybody? None. No committee reports that I'm aware of. This flood. No committee reports. Nothing from you. Uh, not committee reports. Okay. Communication. Nope. No communication. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a member comment, but <laughs> well, member comments and. I I'll start. I just want to thank the board, and from my family to yours, enjoy a happy holiday in whatever way that you celebrate it. We've been through quite a year this year. I think everybody will agree. I know I saw some things that I had never seen before. And we hung in there together, got it all done. And we hardly got a break all year long. It was just meeting after meeting, but we got there. I'm done. Thank you. I would just like to thank the board for welcoming us to the board for being so supportive. And it's been a really wonderful experience. So far, I appreciate your, your experience. I'd like to echo, echo, echo your uh, sentiments. Uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and, and celebrate any way you do celebrate the holidays. And uh, welcome to our new facility. Still a work in progress. And lastly, uh, at our board meeting on Monday night, uh, recognize our our good friends and community up in Oxford. Our thoughts and prayers are with, with, with all them and their families up there. Else? Okay. Motion to whoops. I'll yeah. move to adjourn. Sir. Okay. And I'll support. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're out. Thank you. So. <laughs>